Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. I'm Logan, and back when it came out that Logitech would be discontinuing their extremely popular Harmony line of universal remotes, which we use here in our home theater, well, we were very interested in seeing what kinds of alternatives might end up hitting the market. And that's where Sofa Baton comes in, a company that offers a couple of universal remotes designed to offer a similar set of features to these older Harmony remotes at a competitive price. So today we're gonna to see how their top of the line X1 model works in our home theater, look at some of the pros and cons, and even discuss how you can greatly extend the features of this remote to do things like turn lights on and off directly from a button using just a little bit of custom software. So with all that out of the way, let's take a look at the Sofa Baton X1, which was sent over to us by Sofa Baton for review, but I want to make it clear that everything I'm saying here in this video is my own opinion, and on this one, I certainly have a lot of those. So let's get into the box, where you'll find the remote itself, along with its required hub, a power adapter for the hub, a couple of USB-C cables for power, and some IR extenders to get the infrared signal from the hub to other devices further away in your setup. All this is retailing for about $189 on Amazon right now, and that makes the X1 a fairly expensive solution, even compared to the going prices for a Harmony Elite, but of course you can't buy those new anymore, so that might be a compromise worth making. As for the hardware itself, the X1 remote has a few upgrades that I really do like over the older Harmony remotes, like using USB-C connectors on everything, which is going to be significantly more durable in the long run. The remote feels decent, with this large display at the top very reminiscent of the Harmony Ultimate and Elite remotes, but unlike those remotes, the Sofa Baton features a scroll wheel similar to the one built into your computer mouse, rather than a touchscreen. I think this makes for a really intuitive interface that's actually less prone to errors than the touchscreen of the Harmony remotes, and you don't have to shift your grip to use it. Is what I would have said if it weren't for the stupid back button which is above the screen and perfectly inaccessible in any reasonable situation. Aside from that, the remote feels pretty decent in the hand, and you can feel the good build quality as you're shuffling up and down the remote trying to reach the unfortunately placed colored buttons, which are so far down the remote you just about flip it out of your hand every time you try to use them. In all seriousness though, the remote is pretty nice. It has this high quality soft touch material around the entire body, the buttons give you a sharp tactile click without feeling hollow or plasticky, and it seems to have pretty decent battery life as well, which is certainly a factor given the batteries in older Harmony remotes are really starting to show their age. I feel like Sofa Baton did miss out on a big opportunity though by only providing a USB-C port on the bottom of the remote and forgoing a charging dock like you'd see on the Harmony remotes, which really is a lot more convenient to use. The hub on the other hand is actually a really solid little unit. You get a USB-C port for power, two 3.5mm jacks for plugging in the IR blasters, and a little button for pairing. I think it looks pretty clean as well, so long as you never remove the protective plastic and turn it into an absolute fingerprint magnet. Although, to be fair, the same can be said about the Harmony hub as well. As far as setup is concerned, all you have to do is grab the free Sofa Baton app off the Google Play Store or Apple App Store, which comes with a reassuring 2.2 star rating, and create an account. Once that's done, it'll guide you through the pairing process and get the hub on your Wi-Fi network, at which point a firmware update will start, and once that's done, the app will prompt you to not reopen it for at least 5 minutes because it's not actually done updating. I have absolutely no idea what would have happened if I were to open the app within that 5 minutes, and honestly, I don't think I want to. Once the setup process is complete, a lot of the functionality here is designed to closely mimic the layout of a Logitech Harmony remote. You have devices, which you add from Sofoton's database or program in yourself using your existing IR remotes, and those are used to build activities, which group together devices, chain power events, and make special mappings on the remote to integrate your entire system. And honestly, all this is pretty decently done in my experience. The latency between button presses and actions happening over IR or Wi-Fi was actually pretty low, and all of the default mappings with the devices that we tested were perfectly fine. And even features like macros are well supported, so you can have one button trigger multiple actions across multiple devices, all within the same activity. But there's also a reason the app has 2.2 stars, and most of that just lies within the app's weird behavior. It's slow, at some points the screen just gets stuck with no updates until you restart it, uh, I ran into multiple entries for devices like my Xbox One, only one of which actually worked, and in general it's just really jank and not put together very well. Now I want to make it clear that this isn't a deal breaker. The official Logitech app has its fair share of problems, and it's gotten me plenty mad in the past, but it still needs to be mentioned because there's 
almost too much room for improvement here, and hopefully bringing it up helps to guide Sofa Baton on places that they can improve the remote. The one thing that actually got me really excited about the Sofa Baton though was their promise of an open API that would make it a lot easier to integrate into your smart home system, which I was going to dedicate a pretty good section of the video to, but as it turns out, all their API option does is expose a webhook on some random IP address, which allows you to turn activities on or off. I felt like this would have been too boring of a conclusion, so I took the time to test out different unofficial ways of integrating other services into this remote, and I ended up landing on a solution that I think a lot of people might find useful. See, one of the coolest things that you can do with the Logitech Harmony remotes is control compatible devices, like Philips Hue bulbs, directly from the buttons on the remote. So for example, if everyone sat down and ready to watch a movie but the lights are still on, well, rather than getting up and turning them off, you can just hit one of the buttons here and toggle the lights. This is a really useful feature, but at the moment, Sofa Baton remotes do not offer a similar solution. That's why before recording this review, I did just a little bit of work and made that possible through the use of some C Sharp code. I should mention beforehand that this is a little bit techy, and if you're not familiar with things like IFTTT or Home Assistant, this part of the video might not provide much value. But for those of you that are into home automation and want to know how to get the most out of your system, well, here's what I did. All of this is possible thanks to something called ECP EMU Server, a small piece of software which runs on your network and tells the remote that it's a Roku which supports being controlled over Wi-Fi. Then any button presses the remote thinks it's sending to this fake Roku will be intercepted by the software and just trigger a completely separate action, like running a webhook to turn your lights on or off for example. You can set all of this up through a nice little web interface, which just spits out a map file with all of the values the software needs to get requests to and from the right places. This basically gives you unlimited possibilities, since now any button on the remote can be programmed to trigger an infinite amount of webhooks from within any activity. I want to make it abundantly clear that I just wrote all of this in my free time. All of the code and binaries are freely available on GitHub for you to set this up yourself if you know how to do so. But unfortunately, I don't have the time or resources to provide support for the software or guide folks through getting it working in their particular situation. But I do hope this provides a little bit more value, and maybe this is something that would convince you to go with the sofa baton, knowing that you really have the ability to dig into your system and configure it, even if the company themselves aren't providing that support officially. Then again, all of this works perfectly on the Harmony as well, so take that for what it's worth. In the end, I'm really torn on the Sofa Baton X1. I don't feel like it's a bad piece of hardware, and with the devices we tested, it ultimately did exactly what it was supposed to do. But I feel like it's lacking the refinement that made the Harmony remotes such good products. I have a lot of hope though, since people have been saying the software experience has gotten significantly better over time, and Sofa Baton made some huge changes to their lower end U2 remote that made it a lot better than the U1 remote. And ironically, the U2 remote actually fixed a lot of the ergonomic problems that I mentioned with the X1, so maybe in the future we'll see an X2 version that might really be able to stack up. To Sofa Baton, I would say this. Don't waste your time and money trying to make something different from the Harmony remotes. These are the benchmark. Instead, try to improve the software experience. Open up your API and don't limit your hardware with this week's software. And to everyone else, I think the X1 is a good attempt by Sofa Baton to try to fill the void left by Harmony remotes, but unfortunately for $189, it kind of misses the mark. It's not horrible, and as I mentioned, it could be a far better offering if just a few of these issues were addressed. But if I had to rate this remote from a 0 to 10, I'd probably have to give it a 5, because it kind of falls right in the middle. It's not too bad, but it's not too great either. And that's pretty much all I have to say. So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this video. Let us know if you have any questions or comments down in the comments section below, and I hope you found this video helpful. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss any of our future content. And as always, have an awesome day.